A warm welcome, everyone, to our webinar Strategic Planning for e-buses. Replacing diesel buses and electrifying bus fleets is an important but complex task. Due to the heavy investment, the operators have to take a careful planning is needed. My name is Sebastian Siedemann and I'm working as a, a product manager for PTV Visum in PTV headquarter in Karlsruhe, Germany. In the EU, there is new legislation in place and in other countries there will be something similar. The Clean Vehicle Directive defines how a clean vehicle is fueled and it gives uh, minimum quotas on low and zero emission vehicles in procurement from summer uh, 2021 on. Given that time window operators have to act now or at least take the first steps in planning for the change. Due to the legislation and of course the need uh, to improve air quality in our cities, numbers of uh, buses are increasing over the last years and uh, it's expected to increase further. Battery electric buses do not pollute the city and there is, they are quietly in operation, but comes with two major drawbacks. In comparison to diesel buses, their range is limited and fuel, refueling lasts longer or must be done more frequently. But how bad are those drawbacks? The following graph is showing the dependencies. The green lines you see here represents the charging with different charging power. The axis depicts the battery size and the available energy. The blue lines showing the energy demand and here is the battery costs. Means if you charge uh, a bus for about three hours by 50 kilowatts, you may have 120 kilowatt hours energy available for driving. If you consume 2.5 kilowatt uh, hours per kilometer, it will approximately last for 50 kilometers. So it is 50 kilometers of driving for three hours of charging. If you charge with 300 kilowatts for about 1.5 hours, it will give you 350 kilowatt hours, which will give you about 150 kilo, uh, kilometers with the same consumption. So you have to consider the charging power and the capacity. And you may ask, why not charge every time by high charging power to save time? Yeah, besides the needed uh, infrastructure and the capacity on your electric rig, grid, you have to take uh, the cost of the battery into account. Batteries are expensive. They are more than 50% of your investments of an electric bus. So you have to protect your investment, means you have to protect your battery and uh, prevent uh, battery fading. Battery fading means that your battery can't reach the capacity of a new one anymore. Charging stresses the battery and you have to consider the C rate. It's uh, the rate between charging power and capacity and it's most times close to one. It means Slow charging prevents battery fading and high capacity batteries enables faster charging. Another thing you have to consider is the depth, depth of discharge. Nothing brings your battery faster to an end than discharging it completely and then fully recharge it again. 
Same is true to your cell phones, uh, by the way. It's not the amount of charging activities. It's the depth of discharge which harms your battery. In addition, temperature is crucial. So temperature management is crucial for a long life, uh, the long battery uh, for long battery life. So we can see picking the right battery with the best value of money is difficult. So maybe just some let us summarize the decision to be made for battery sizes. We would like to reach maximum efficiency, which means most kilometers per kilowatt hours. And this means the batteries have to be as light as possible. High capacity batteries are uh, have, having a lot of mass, so they are very heavy. We would like to have the smallest battery possible because of the investment. We want to be our battery as robust as possible to protect our investment. We want to have the minimum of charging points in our network means the minimum of the money we have to invest in our infrastructure. And of course, we want to use the maximum charging power to save time during recharging. Putting this on a graph, we can test it to uh, uh, several capacity batteries. So um, a high a capacity battery have a bad uh, attainment for um, energy efficiency because high capacity batteries are heavy so the mass have to be transported so you will have a lower uh, kilometers by kilowatt hours they are expensive so bad um, attainment here they are robust and of course you need um, um, a smaller amount of charging points in your grid and you can charge them with higher charging power. Let us compare this to a low capacity battery. Here, the small, uh, the, the mass is smaller and you have a, a better kilometer by kilowatt hour ratio. You, uh, they are more cheap than the high capacity um, um, batteries and here uh, of course you have to take care about the uh, robustness the state of health of your batteries um, you need more uh, charging points in your infrastructure and you have to take care about the charging power you put on low capacity batteries so and uh, after all, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. It depends on your network, your timetable, and your str uh, charging strategy. About charging strategies, I will uh, introduce three of the most common strategies. There is this called overnight charging, which is using a central depot to charge the buses. So there, slow charging is possible with about four 100 kilowatt uh, chargers uh, because you may have the whole night to charge them. You can or you have to use high capacity batteries with more than 200 kilowatt hours, and bus ranges are about uh, 250 kilometers. Uh, one example for this is Paris uh, using uh, this overnight charging and as you see in the uh, um, uh, in the picture Brussels as well because there were no additional infrastructure outside the depot possible due to protect historical and cultural heritage of the city. 
Another strategy would be opportunity charging. Uh, there, uh, the charging is decentral. Fast chargers uh, have to be applied uh, with about 150 to 400 kilowatts. And you just need small batteries because um, you just need um, to get smaller ranges to get to the new, uh, to the next charging point. Uh, an example for this is Amsterdam Schiphol. They operate about 100 buses. They charge them with 450 kilowatt chargers and they need about 12 minutes to recharge. So something you can easily uh, put in uh, a layover time of a bus uh, in your timetable. Uh, and they operate about 500 kilometers per day, 24 seven. A little more special is uh, the in-motion charging. Uh, there are trolley buses equipped with uh, battering, batteries uh, and they are using in-motion charging while driving below catenary and uh, without catenary they just use their battery so they can afford smaller battery sizes and slower charging. Uh, Zurich is testing those uh, uh, trolley buses um, and they hope for more flexible operation uh, and they do have no extra infrastructure costs because the catenary is already available in Zurich. So you see, when it comes to transfer to electric buses, it's far more than buying new vehicles. The common first approach uh, is most times, yeah, we try to change as less as possible. We just fuel uh, buses with electric energy, which will charge them uh, overnight in the depot and buy batteries, uh, which lasts the uh, whole day. And then we just equip the depots with sufficient en uh, energy. Yes, this is one solution, but as you saw, it is much more to evaluate and uh, you have to rethink your whole system. PTV would like to help you with this. We would, uh, would uh, give you the chance, a chance to model and simulate your operation and to answer the following questions. We want to uh, see which system do you really want or need, which vehicles, what kind of range, capacity or charging time you need, how many of those vehicles do you need, uh, charging sites, how many of them you need and where are they are best located, um, what kind of charging infrastructure and maybe do you need some uh, changes in your network design. Um, some other things you have to think about is of course you have to train your staff to handle high voltage um, and you have to think about the weight allowance on your network. If you buy uh, buses with uh, high capacity batteries, they might um, weight much more than usual buses and you may have problems with your weight allowance in your system. Um, how do we want to help you with uh, these problems? Um, if we talk about Visum, it's all about uh, traffic modeling. And if we talk about uh, traveling, uh, traffic uh, modeling, it's most times combining uh, the supply given by a timetable um, and combining this with a demand by doing an assignment. So we are having most times the user perspective. We calculate travel and waiting times. Uh, and so on. And with this, we can uh, forecast mode splits and uh, mode shifts, shifts. But there's another uh, big um, uh, procedure called line blocking. You might know this as well as uh, vehicle scheduling. And with this, we do have the operator perspective. So we can calculate how many vehicles do we uh, have to use and how many empty mileages we have to perform? Um, and what does the operation cost 
in the end. And of course, you can uh, talk about energy needs and uh, the pollution by your bus operation. So we try to help you with uh, the procedure called line blocking or vehicle scheduling. Uh, and this tries to combine the vehicle trips of a timetable to vehicle tours, so-called blocks. The optimal blocks block minimize the operation costs. For an instance, you see here four trips, and those four trips are combined by two vehicles. And no empty trips, but waiting time. Um, or you could combine those four trips uh, for, with one vehicle and uh, two empty trips here and here. So if you apply cost to these activities, one can calculate which variant is more cost efficient. And this procedure we extend to battery electric vehicles. And this I would like to show you within Bzoom. This is a small network. It's based on our standard example within uh, Visum. And uh, this time it consists of uh, three lines, a pink, a pink one, a yellow one, and a green one, and uh, one uh, central bus depot. And of course, there is a timetable beneath this. This is a graphical representation of it. And all these lines uh, are served by a standard bus, diesel bus, uh, with a seat capacity of 35 and a total capacity of 100, and some cost rates applied for service trips, empty trips, layover, depot, and so on. We performed um, a line blocking. Um, and uh, to serve the given timetable, 16 vehicles are required, almost 3,000 kilometers service trips are performed, and just about 120 20, uh, kilometers empty trips are needed. Um, the line blocking editor depicts the tours of the vehicles. Each row depicts one vehicle a day. The trips are color-coded here by the line. So you've got pink trips, yellow trips, and green trips. The light blue is an empty trip, and the yellow is a dwell time on a depot. Now, I want to show what is needed to introduce a NEBUS system. Uh, a detailed description of all this I will show you is available in the Visum example within your uh, installation, which will uh, you can navigate that by help, examples, and then go to open exam directory, and there you will find um, an example for e-line blocking. So, how to set up the electric bus operation in Visum? First, we have to introduce an activity, which must be re uh, repeated frequently, means in this time charging, uh, here overnight charging. And to define the frequency, we define the charging and the consumption uh, function. The charging function in here is uh, very straightforward. Uh, in this case, it is uh, just uh, the default duration, maybe two hours, um, a linear function of this. So it means 
if you just uh, have a, um, uh, a default duration of two hours charging it full then one hour will charge it just half uh, and the uh, this uh, charging or this consumption function is as straightforward as the other one um, you've got a range about maybe 150 kilometers and each kilometer you're doing uh, will reduce your charging. You see, those are defined in formulas, which gives you more advanced uh, charging uh, uh, and consumption models to implement in your system as well. How to do this, I will uh, show later. We will start just with this very straightforward uh, functions. After we defined those, we introduced a new vehicle combination, of course, called eBus, and um, we define a range here of 150 kilometers and introduce costs for all uh, activities uh, as well for charging costs in here. After this, we have to set up our timetable and we have to uh, set up the, um, the journeys which should be operated by the new bus. So you see in here all the uh, vehicle journeys in our network and I just uh, assign them uh, the e-bus um, vehicle, uh, yeah, uh, which should be operating then these journeys. Um, next, we have to set up the depot where it is possible to charge. And we pick the central um, depot and we equip this with uh, charging um, infrastructure and make it uh, a depot and a charging point for the new um, vehicle uh, type, the e bus we introduced. Yeah, and then that, that was almost everyone. Uh, we in, uh, introduced uh, or we inserted a new uh, block version, and the block version is a kind of scenario which is uh, uh, is calculated. With them, you can compare different settings and results by each other. So uh, we define the charging activity which has to be taken into account during the line blocking in this block version, and um, all further settings within there uh, are uh, explained in detail in the manual and as well in the published example. Let us look up one of those results if you run um, a line blocking procedure. They could look like this. So the line blocking editor is now depicting uh, a color-coded state of charge from green, means it's full capacity, to red, which means an empty bus or battery, uh, and dark blue is the charging activities. In this scenario, we saw uh, um, overnight charging, so a centralized, a centralized bus depot. And as you can see, um, the setting is like this, that you need charging during the day. So the um, range is not sufficient for this timetable. So, and this you also need to see, you need about 17 buses to serve um, the time, um, the timetable and about 400 uh, kilometers of empty trips are needed and there are about 42 charging activities planned and the depth of this charge is around 90 percent so you will uh, reduce or you will uh, drive your battery uh, when till the 10 percent uh, capacity left uh, which is not good for uh, the state of health of a battery. So the finding of this scenario might be your battery capacity is not sufficient. Let us look up 
another scenario, a scenario for overnight charging, uh, for uh, opportunity charging. Um, we introduced charging facilities at one of the two final destinations per line. By this, um, we increase the number of charging activities to 143, but the maximum discharge, or uh, the depth of discharge, is about 63%, which will improve battery life. And the number of um, uh, vehicles drop to 16 again, and the empty trips are about 100 kilometer. So this sounds very good, but if you look closely, you will see that one turn or return trip consumes more energy than is taken from the grid in the layover time. So also in here, you should increase uh, the charging power at your location to um, avoid um, this drop of um, of uh, uh, capacity. Uh, the next scenario we, we tried out was in motion charging. For this, um, we equipped one section of the network with overhead wires, which is in Visum easy because you just have to put in an attribute on the link. Um, and make sure your charging and consumption um, um, calculation take uh, them into account. Uh, and in this scenario, already 16 vehicles are needed, um, but it's still needed to charge at the depot. And uh, the diff depth of discharge is already high. So the key findings in here, we might have two less catenary or two small batteries and uh, maybe also not enough charging powers. A last scenario I want to show you is um, again uh, overnight charging. Um, this time we introduced a more advanced consumption model where each link uh, holds an attribute of the consumption of the energy consumption. And the charging model is now considering different charging uh, power at different uh, charging stops. Um, how to do this? Uh, please refer to our example to see how we set up the model for doing this. You see also in here, uh, 16 vehicles are required then and uh, uh, we have um, also a high uh, depth of discharge. So uh, in here, uh, it is also most, li most likely the capacity of the battery is not sufficient. I will jump back to um, a PowerPoint because with all this data, we now calculated you can do the total cost of ownership calculation to, to decide which scenario fits best for your network and your supply. So this could be some of your results to see overnight charging and opportunity charging gives you this total cost of ownership and the diesel buses might be already uh, expensive, more expensive uh, if you include health and climate uh, costs within there. Let me summarize what we, what we heard today. So due to the legislation, operators has to consider zero uh, emission vehicles within their fleet. The clean, direct, uh, clean vehicle directive is already in place, um, but it is much more uh, then uh, fueling vehicles differently to introduce electric buses. It's kind of introducing a new system and this new system has to be planned. This uh, PTV Visum 
you are able to simulate those different scenarios. And uh, PDV offers the base of a reliable calculation of this total cost of ownership or life cycle costs. Yeah, and with this summary, I already would like to finish this webinar. I would like to point you to the step-by-step -step example to our eBus line blocking. You already see, just go there to example, open example directory, and you will find those document, uh, which should cover all question is how to insert your, um, your model in Visu. Yeah, um, I will be here for about five to ten minutes for answering questions which might occur uh, already. Or you can uh, send me an email um, and I will answer them later. <laughs>